Good evening. We're so glad that you've joined us for JJC Talks. JJC Talks is presented by the Joshua Johnson Council of the Baltimore Museum of Art. And this is our lively conversation with artists from the African-American and African diaspora. We are absolutely thrilled to have with us Chooks, who is a, an amazing photographer and digital artist living here in Baltimore. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about JJC and introduce our host for the evening as well. Joshua Johnson Council is one of the nation's oldest support groups at an art museum devoted to African-American art and artists. We're going to be 40 years old this year, and that is truly a legacy organization that has made a difference at the Baltimore Museum of Art and in the city of Baltimore. Our members are folks just like you, people who love art and people who enjoy the experience at the museum. Our membership do support several internships at the museum for young people who want to go into museum careers as curators, as marketing people, and in some cases as artists. We support an artist in residence program that we sponsor jointly with MICA, the Maryland Institute and College of Art and with the BMA. Over the years, JJC has contributed to the purchase of 16 works of art by artists of color for the museum collection. We have programming here at the museum we also have, of course, this wonderful live stream conversation. And we often do studio visits and museum visits around the region. Join us. We hope that you enjoy the art and the artists as much as we do. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my host, Antoinette Peel, who is a trustee here at the Baltimore Museum of Art. And our guest, Chukwu Dumebi Amadi Amina is a, a Baltimore-based artist who was born in Nigeria. His work is photographic in nature, but he also has studied electronic and digital art. He has two degrees from the Baltimore Museum of Art, uh, a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Master's degree. He combines photography, digital, and video art and uses it to describe and illuminate the journey that he has lived, the duality of perspectives and the experiences of being an individual raised in Africa and a Black American. He has often used adornment um, as, as a, a way of expressing African-based and Afrocentric ideas, uses artifacts and objects, as well as using his own imagination and creativity, which is quite profound. We are grateful for your time tonight, and we are so glad that you're here to share with us about your journey in art. And now we'll turn it over to Chooks. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a blessing to be here, and I appreciate um, JJC and the Baltimore Museum of Art for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to dive right in, um, just because <laughs> just find the nerves. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Oh no, can't see it. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to start from the very beginning, um, my influences. I'm going to talk a little bit about that before I talk a little about my journey and myself. Um, about my work. Um, 
I named this presentation Finding Home in Us um, because it really is the story of my journey. And um, when I started entering the world of art um, when I was in college, I, I was looking at a lot of photographers. Um, um, I can name a couple of artists that really inspire me overall. Um, artworks from um, Omar Victor Diop, um, Ibrahim El Salahi, um, um, Modupel Ola um, Faduba. Um, these are just a few artists, African artists I was looking at. But for me at the time, when I fell in love with photography, I was looking at the works of um, Jamel Shabazz. Um, I don't know if anyone has seen photography um, book of Jamel Shabazz called A Time Before Crack. Um, but to me, this are some of the most amazing images I've seen. Um, and I don't know, for me, the thing that really drew me to Jamel Shabazz's work um, was he had this way of capturing the coolness of community, especially in blackness. Um, there was just like a, I don't know, something like in his photos, it's like something, there was something in the air of just like coolness. There was the poses where he had, where he photographed black people and they were, they were so structured, almost like he, he, he was, almost in one way capturing the lifestyle, not the lifestyle, but like the life of people and the beauty and community of people, but also like there's harmony in it. There's harmony in the pose and standing from the camera and the movement that was happening. Um, not a photographer that really, to me, had that same, that same energy was James Bono. Um, and he made the ordinary feel um, edi editorial. Um, he had a way of capturing the time um, that just felt like familiar. Um, there's moments that were that were pure, but the way he photographed them, the way he captured the people. Um, and from then on, I knew I was a portrait photographer. Um, I I had this firm belief that you know the, the beauty of this world. You know, especially um, from where I'm from, from my experience, especially in the diaspora comes from us um, and comes from interactions with one another. Um, in moments like this, especially works for Janelle Shabazz and James Bonner, like, you know, they didn't come from passively um, photographing. They had to interact with the people around them and, and, their, and their environment. Um, the first few photos um, that I felt like really led me um, towards photography, towards portraiture, um, what I call my early evolutions are um, this three. Um, this was, I believe, my junior or senior year, um, or junior towards senior year of, of my undergrad. And I had the opportunity to travel abroad um, to Argentina and visit the Wichita tribe. Um, it was for a fibers class. Um, they had a, a, like a technique that was passed through um, generations of weaving um, and manipulating cloth. Um, and I was able to photograph them. You know, there, was, there was, of course, a language barrier. Um, you had a translator, but you know, they talked about the process. They showed you how to weave. They showed you how to make the thread. Um, and at the end of the trip, you know, um, I asked for a photo, and I took this three portrait. The portrait. Um, and at the time, I was trying to push and search, you know, how to communicate, you know, the idea of um, history through not just a portrait of a person, um, but how can I push image more? Um, this, are our th this is our 35 millimeter film, um, shot in black and white, um, L Ford 400 um, speed. Um, and like to me, this to me to this day, this was one of the like, purest interactions I met. You know, it was like a village setting. It reminded me very much of like how I grew up in my grandparents' um, like, village, like farm. And, um, you know, they were welcoming Jennifer's food, you know, and seeing how they, how the idea of passing down something from generation to generation, a way of making clothing that was really beautiful. Um, so there's this aspect of learning, of learning about, you know, history through, through people versus through literature and through stuff, like how that translates and how that transforms and how can you visually implement that. Um, second place where I found myself really um, 
researching this idea of portraiture was photographing my family. Um, this is my mom. And um, throughout my, my photographic career, throughout my photographic career, my mom has probably my most willing subject. Um, but I've been, I've photographed her for, since like, I, since I switched to art when I was in college. Um, and there are, we have, this is saying we have, you know, back home that, you know, like if you don't use your gift at home, um, then you don't use your gift at all. Um, and the idea of photographing family and, um, and capturing the essence of my mother, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a lot <laughs> to, to, to kind of try to handle. But like, you know, the idea of like, the difference between talking to a stranger and talking to this woman who raised you and, you know, photographing her and talking to her as the process grows has really started to stick in my practice. Um, but I was trying to, in this search, in this um, research I was doing, I was trying to learn a little more about myself. Um, I was 15 years old when I came to the United States. Um, and for me, um, struggling with my identity was, um, um, was a real thing. Um, finding or accepting or trying to understand that who I was um, back home, there was space for it in, this, in, in the United States. And for a long time, I didn't think there was. Uh, for a long time, I, 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 I dare say like I, I was ashamed of my blackness um, because I, I didn't understand if there was a place. Um, and I had to learn about myself. I had to, in some way, shape or form, carve like the space that I occupy for myself right now. And it was through meeting people, it's through meeting people in the diaspora who really helped me through that journey. Um, so really it, it happened for me when I came to do my master's at the Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, I was at the um, photographic media program, I believe it's called the Photo Media Society now. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and for my first year and a half in the city, I just walked around and photographed people. Anyone who had a conversation with me, anyone who given the time of day, um, you know, learning about people and telling where I was from, you know, and really trying to understand, you know, in a, a city of Baltimore that is majority, like is a predominantly black city, you know, how, you know, how coming in, how do I navigate, how do I fit in, you know, you learn a lot, you know, and, you know, honestly, it's it's most amazing thing for me that, you know, wherever city, wherever part of the U.S. you go, there is a, a there is a, a unique part of the diaspora, you know, the way people talk in Baltimore is different, they talk in Louisiana, like, and that, that difference is really beautiful, mannerisms and, and things, but, there was, I was drawn, um, I was drawn to, 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 to us because I, you know, it was, it was just certain things I noticed um, that were from back home that I noticed, you know, here. For example, like I remember, I remember vividly, like my, we used to cook around the stove with my grandparents and, you know, like my grandparents would set the stove, you know, cook, we would like sit in a circle and talk. And you know, the same, the same kind of feeling, the same kind of vibes you get in a barbecue, you know, that kind of thing. Things started to translate for, for me um, in that way. Um, and then I started um, thinking about basically how does one combine or juxtapose the embodiment of spirituality and representation um, through a lens of like a, a, tri a transient being like technology. And because, you know, I think that in the world we live in today, there is the self, there's the photograph, there's quote unquote, the truth. And there is like this other phase of like digital representation of what blackness is. Um, and I started thinking it in a traditional form, you know, from my stories of like, you know, old gods and Yoruba or Igbo culture, from Obatala to Amadioha, you know, what, what really, you know, that connection that ties 
a lot of people um, who are born in the United States to Africa, but you know, things that they can't see or they, they don't know of. Um, how, how can I make other people see it? Um, and what does it mean and what does it look like to find representation of truth that's no part of collective narrative? Um, and I started working um, with um, with the idea of manipulation and imagery. And like, this is where like the practice um, really started to come from. In this one image, it is seven different photos. Um, and this is when collage theory comes from um, and trying to mate into one. But the idea of blending realities um, to still keep truth, um, you know, in this photograph, you know, three skaters were skating in front of me um, and were dancing as they were skateboarding. It was a whole vibe. And, um, you know, I had separate photos of it, but I wanted to, it to live in one space. Um, and the idea that I, identity, especially Black identity, is not a linear thing. It, it, and, and it stems from a lot, like a lot of things are represented in, in, in culture by culture and diaspora diaspora. And it's, it is, um, it's such a powerful thing. Um, you know, you, you might be from Ghana and, you know, you know, and you come to Nigeria, you know, there's still going to be an argument about whose jollof rice is better. And is there still going to be all these little things that, you know, that comes from like, like that comes from those, those connections. Um, but I really wanted to start to play with the idea of how does that look? How can I bring artifacts and, and imagery in? How can I build this body of work? And I started with self-portraits, of course. Um, these were the first like three major pieces that I started from to, um, I, um, I started from in my, I think my second year of undergrad. And this is really where I started to build a foundation for my practice. Um, using photographs on photographs or parts of photographs, using line drawings to create different effects, using um, darkness of skin, tonality, and when it comes to a black and white photo, um, how that really reflects and stretches, um, using the idea of a mask that, that forms fit to the figure, to the face, as a way to, one, give that global, global um, approach to the work. Um, so it doesn't, um, but also to keep it in the Western world with material and clothing and fashion. Um, and now we're talking, break it down into process. Um, I'm sorry, I hope I'm good on time. I'm not sure if I'm still okay. You're good. You good? All right, thank you. Um, so, all my pieces either start from sketches, um, start from writing, um, and lastly, conversations. Um, I used to be, I used to do, do a lot more street photography, and I still do, but over the past couple of years, two, three years, I've been doing more private sessions um, with um, friends or, or people, or people who I've known for a little bit and had conversations with them. Um, and creating more um, complex pieces around them, around for me the the for me for what they embody uh, as individuals, and for what they've taught me as you know someone still in, in my own way assimilating to a space. Um, I learn I learn new things every year. Um, I learn new things about myself, about you know, um, about. Diverse, diversity in its own, in, in the diaspora, and how things look and how things come across. Um, this is my friend Dominique. Um, I've known her for you know, a, quite a couple of years, and we would have, you know, we talk and have conversations, and you know, just about life, like, you know, spaces that we were trying to enter or, you know, trying to be a part of, and, you know, how sometimes we felt like their odds were against us. Um, but for me, it starts from that basis. Um, this piece is called Don Diva. Um, and again, it starts from the photograph. Um, the background, uh, background is um, on current cloth. 
um, with a black um, with a black jacket and a red hat with core beads on it. Um, I thought about multiple ways to like frame this, um, and the mass creation is really the last part of the photo. Um, I try to usually sketch up the mask um, prior um, and try and see if I can blend it with the image where I can keep structurally facial features while having certain parts of them like really um, really expressing the mask detail. Um, some of it is a mixture between finding images and parts of images and combining together. Um, some of it is um, really um, using a pen tablet and painting in sections um, I'm going down um, and, and creating different ways and shading in where, where like a shadow used to be. Um, and sometimes I use words and text. Um, I do have a graphic design background. Um, my undergrad was in photography, darkroom photography and design. So uh, a lot of my approach and like from my influence that I mentioned before, the pose, um, the, the, the fashion um, and the pose of it um, really always try to come from a place of emulating a stance of power of presence. Um, and a lot of sketches come out um, and I, I was hoping to, I had a lot of slides and I didn't know if I, I was trying to have the minimum amount of slides, but like the breakdown of it is um, step by step. Um, first, we have to get, um, if you're looking at the whole photo of the whole photograph, usually, you know, you take the picture in the frame, you know, and you know what it is. Um, for, me, but for me, the construction starts um, with the photograph, with the sketch, with the photograph, with the words. Once I have what I need, I caught it by section. So with this piece, um, she stood above the lights of Toad. It was the top part, you know, of this, the first photograph I took was the top part of the figure, which you can see um, right here um, in this spot right here. Um, and the other part was the bottom part of this figure, um, which you can see right here. This was the afterthought of it. This was um, scanned images of um, a dollar bill um, that had been manipulated and a uh, digital painting of a, of a bull. Um, um, but um, really, it's for me, it stems from the photograph and creating a frame where it, it's it's almost as if like the the figure is brought, bursting out from the scenes. The figure seems always bigger than, than the scene. Um, and relating using the Ankara as a way to place culture, to place you know somewhere in the world, um, somewhere in the in, in the diaspora and the roots of Africa. Um, but again, having the Western cloth like the jacket um, as a way to tie it to where we are. Um, and some of these constructions, you know, they take a lot of time and they take a lot of thought. Um, this one piece started through a, a quote I wrote down. I, um, I, you know, I was reading and you know, the thought like we padded through fallen waters towards the songs of two songs of New Hope. And um, at this this piece was very special. I was actually photographing um, photographs for a book um, from one of group, one of my group of friends, Melissa. And um and, and on the other hand, I took this photo um at a, a random fashion show in um in New York. Um, this guy I believe is from Sudan. Um, I, I met him this was a couple of years ago, and um, you know, the idea of using parts of the photo is really important. A lot of the times before I bring other elements from outside the photograph, I just take the photograph that I have and I break it apart. You know, from, if you can see the, this that is holding on his hand is part of this element right here of just the piano itself. Um, the blinds are, that are here are just um, mirrored, if you can see back and forth. Um, a lot of the pieces that are used in the photograph are taken from the photograph itself um, and attached and built to different parts to fit, to fit accordingly. Um, moving on, my current practice. Um, right now, my current practice has become more um, 
personal in the sense that my interactions uh, with people are more individual or more very most so like one-on-one -on -one. um i and I, I i still love street photography i just do take a lot of photos out and about but um i really do feel like part of building the image the spiritual representation of person it takes there's the time aspect um there's the initial conversation of the ask it's again to know them as the, as a person um having to understand what you know you know to me as an artist like everyone has this different color sound you know a stance pose um everything has a different energy um and even the even the the titles you know come because as this beings are supposed to represent something much deeper so as part of it being a, uh, like an aesthetic thing it, it for me i'm trying to talk about you know, for this one, Yangano, they make passive fireproof. And basically, doesn't mean, it basically means and translates to like, you know, um, like wealth doesn't make you immune to, to the ills of the world. Um, like, you know, like just because, like, you know, and basically saying, and like kind of like a commentary to, you know, I don't know, I think, I, I, I feel that wealth is, something that you know not not wealth but like being able to provide for oneself is something that i highly create like i like people individuals anyone highly craves but the idea that you know you know it's, it doesn't it doesn't replace a good soul um it doesn't replace a good deed um and the story um heavy is the head um I took this photo of this um child um I was walking around West Baltimore, I believe, um, and I, I should have juxtaposed the other photo, the regular photo, went to the side, um, crazy to see. But um, um, it was a simple passive conversation. You know, I asked if I could add, take a photo, and you know, he was just like, and I, I was trying to make small talk, like, how are you? You know, how was going on? And he was just like, you know, things have been hard, but you know, like, like we get through it, and you know, like. So much like he was just like just so much responsibility and um and I you know title heavy is ahead um like I don't know I think it's, it's part of the trying to emulate what that is you know the crown that you choose to if you choose to call yourself royalty in the world of science where you call yourself king you know the crown like weighs um has weights to it to have that responsibility to have um you know yeah um moving on um this piece too again a lot of my work comes from writing um and this piece started off as a poem that i wrote um i wrote this in i believe 2001 um the image itself was taken in 2000 and i believe either 2001 or 2020 it's either one or the other um and you know even from this writing and i took this photo again it's like a it's a it's a building of worlds um the original photo is just these three people standing in the back um and these came from the other two photos i took of them um and for me it was you know trying to um, I don't know if you don't actually read the, read the poem, but um, it goes, there's a dragon in the dungeon, um, but the devil at the door. So a guild of niggas posted, but the demon made a call. All the homies ever wanted was to clear the dungeon's halls, make room, make it safe for other, um, make it safe for other brothers to get the share of the horde. But the devil showed his hand and summoned an NPC. Um, evil monsters who have no love for folks who look like me asks us to show our hands and throw our cards on the floor do we keep them where they are and double down on the draw and um yeah um this is um sosa and soccer um, um again blended imagery and blended of worlds um and really trying to go on to um, the softer, softer side of things. Um, and yeah, I keep diving into the realm of space and people understanding. Um, 
one of the things I think one of the real things that really pushed this piece was at the time I was reading um, um, all about um, all about love by Bell Hooks. Well, I was reading it again because um, I believe you have to read that multiple times to really understand it. Um, but really taking a photo um, of a significant other and um, and what that means and what that means to be a part of your life and in a space and how space changes and fragments when you know you know a different kind of black love enters your uh, enters your life. Um, yeah, um, my work is predominantly around us. Um, I I think that people hold. You know, we hold the keys to saving each other. Uh, and it sounds really maybe basic. It sounds maybe really utopian, but uh, I, I do feel like part of who I am today and part of me being here today has been because of the grace of Black people, and the grace of the diaspora all over, that somehow, some way, whether it is a language barrier or something or, you know, different cultural aspects that makes us different, there is always this underlying sacredness that I feel amongst where we are present. Um, and I believe that that power should not go unseen. I believe that it is present in each and every one of us. Um, and I hope that, you know, as long as I keep making art, that, you know, it continues to show us the work. But I'm going to stop it right here. Thank you. Do you want me to lift this up or? I can stop sharing. That's up to you. If you um, want to keep it up. I mean, your work is powerful and you have a lot of um, powerful messages in it. We did get a couple of questions in Facebook from Dominique. And one of the questions she has, if you're ready to take on some questions. Yeah, for sure. One of the questions she says, when did you start incorporating video into some of your work and what inspired that exploration? Um. Honestly, I, I think that for those who do, for those of you who know me, um, um, I, I'm I love to dance. Um, I used to I used to be um, a heavy dancer, um, <laughs> so, yeah, and I mean like professionally and like we do like dancing competitions and big bands. Um, but I love to dance and I love to move. Um, and like it's crazy. Everyone in my family could could like my brothers were really good at it. They're in dance crews in college, and and for me, movement had always been a big deal. And I, for my whole like graduate year, it was all about self discovery. Um, there were things that I I didn't I didn't know about because if you if you think about it, until my master's, I'd been in the United States for about six years, so I was. There were a lot of things that I didn't know. I pretended I knew, but I didn't really know. Um, and, you know, my initial body of work starting from here was about finding self, learning things about myself. The image on the far right, this one, the great cry, the banala, that's what I call it, that's why it's named. Um, it's literally about the pain of real, of like figure, of realizing you know, of, of seeing yourself for the first time and the pain that you feel and the pain that, you, that, that accumulates from denying yourself from such a long period of time. Um, like coming to a space and, and, you know, coming from Nigeria where, you know, like race is not really a thing, so all of a sudden, in the space and recognizing you're black and you you know to some level you, you really don't know what that what that is and you you and still trying to figure it out and you distance yourself because you know in some in your head you think maybe i don't want to associate with it but like it's who you are and you and you're in constant battle with yourself um i started doing video because i wanted to really move it out um i made a film for my thesis and like uh and it was a lot of movement, a lot of dancing, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things that I, I grew up doing. Um, was as the years went by, or like as I stayed here, I felt more distant and distant away, uh, away from. Um, and sometimes, like, 
you know, there's a like there's a you know, as photographer, it's just capture a moment in time versus as a videographer, it's something over a period of time. Um, and sometimes the only way to tell a story is to drag it over a period of time and and unfold it and make people understand. And like the video, a lot of the video works I make are very much so, you know, about this me moving as a spiritual being and like and removing layers and layers and learning about myself and through these layers I get closer like and I, you get closer you feel like you're part you're part of part of it so like I, I call my 2016 to like my 2019 era of, of making art like a de-shedding um some of a lot of my work in too in this phase I think in person were really dark um you know, this middle piece is called Becoming Peace. And, um, you know, it's for me, it's the idea of being being seen as something, you know, like, like out of world, you know, something foreign, um, you know, above, above understanding, like, but trying to like in and stay and sitting down, like I'm taking a passport for a rough. Um, for me, there's this, for me, like video is about, really extending that story. You wanna, you, you have a lot to say and an image is not enough to say it. Um, and it really is about the piece and it's about the message and it's about really what you're trying to get across that really, really influences like my choice and format. Okay, one of the other questions Dominic had is, um, how long does it take to complete a piece and when do you know it's finished? It takes me a while. I'm a I'm a, <laughs> I'm a slow slow maker. Um, and honestly, I, I have to sit. I have to I have to sit a long time with a piece. Um, I remember even this piece. Um, I believe it took me a couple of months. I believe um, like maybe three, maybe four. Um, but it was also like during a period where I wasn't going out a lot. And um, so I had really time to, to like think and, and, you know, I would, I would, you know, <laughs> I, I remember I would like just call Dominique randomly and ask a question and, and talk and continue conversations. Um, and, you know, I think that, I think for me, and it's, it's going to sound really maybe backwards, but like when, I think a piece is finished to me when the edited and um, collaged piece reminds me <laughs> of the person, <laughs> of the original, of where I started from. Um, and I, and I, it sounds it sounds weird, but I think that you know, even though I, I, I appearance seems to change in this piece, it's like for me, it's 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 about presence and power. And I'm trying to create this alter spiritual representation of, of the photo to the right. Um, and for me, that's when I know a piece is finished. And, you know, it doesn't need any more, it doesn't need anything because in, in any form of collage or editing, whether physical or whether digital, you can edit and edit and edit and edit and edit until, you know, things change it. But for me, that's where I stop. It's when for me, there is this like, that's when I, you know, I looked at it, I was like, that's dumb. And, you know, and I, I left it alone. Um, but yeah, I'll say a couple months. A couple months. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of layers. There's yeah. one other question here. How is your work received by your Nigerian audiences, friends and family compared to American audiences? And are that's the influences and inspirations felt the same way? Um, that's a tough one. Um, you know, It depends on, <laughs> on, you know. I think for my, for my, like for example, for my family, for my parents, it took them. It took a minute. Um, I, I was a computer science major in college, um, and then a tragedy in the, ha in the family happened. And um, I come from a very artistic family. Like both of my brother, my eldest, my late brother was a was an architect and like could draw since he was a kid. Could could draw amazingly since he was a kid and. My my second older brother, he made music and was very musically inclined. But you know, in a 
traditional, you know, African household, you know, like the arts are not seen as, you know, as a way to build a career. Um, but after my brother passed, I, you know, I, it, it kind of clicked, it clicked that, you know, life wasn't certain and that, you know, I, I wanted to make, I wanted to do, make art, you know, I was pretty much clear on that. Um, and my parents, you know, I think they understood and they kind of understood that, you know, passion breeds success. So if this was my passion to let me be. Um, I say there are different schools of thought. Um, they are in in the sense of, and which is, which is a, a conversation that should be had in the diaspora of like, you know, put in African um, artifacts and influences on um, like people born here. But for me, if you are, if you got melanin in you, you're from the motherland. Um, and I have to put it like very blunt and, and straightforward. And we can get into the nuances of like cultures and this and that, and we, and those are valid arguments. But for me, it's the idea that, you know, in this space, when I see someone who was born here, and some of like some of this images, some of them know they did the DNA test in me, so it actually makes my research easier. Then I can pull from other stuff. Uh, I can pull from like the stuff from the particular like, culture they you know they represent. But like a lot of times, I don't know that detail, and a lot of times, I think that that is the beauty of it, is that you can hold such such a <laughs> like a mirage of like of cultures in you. And you know, and, and, and to me, that's powerful. To me, that it's for me. I don't need anything else but to know that you know you come from the source. And the source, you know, whether I know I'm I'm confined to my upbringing in Nigeria, but I, I feel I feel like you know, in some shape or form, that 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 safety and warmth I feel in in the presence of blackness is just universal. So I I'm trying to kind of say that, you know, as is important, is it only as important as you make it to be? I don't think it's a thing that divides any of us. I think it's, it's mostly a unifying thing. A lot of people might disagree, um, but for me in my art practice, I choose for it to be the thing that brings me closer to people and brings, uh, and brings us closer to each other. Um, because I think that a lot of times we, we, we get hung up on our differences um, and there's really not it just it's the same thing but looks it just looks different um, and it's it's done different and you know cultures evolve in different places they go the same with the say the way they say you know you know I had this funny conversation like the way they say like enduring words like dummy here in Baltimore is probably they were different in Louisiana, in Louisiana. And I like it's probably different everywhere else. And like, I think that that's a beautiful thing. And that's that to me is like why I, high, I try to highlight this aspect of them. Like they might not see it, but I see it. For me, it's the first thing I see. You know, it's a it's a it's a connecting thing. That's why I try to bring it in into into the presence of them because to me that's what they that's what they that's what they show and that's what they embody. Um, and it's this like so, and the way I do it is that I, I make a combination of mask, so it doesn't really stem from every anywhere. You can't say it's a, it has aspects of different parts of different cultures. Like the person I'm talking to could have aspects from different parts of different cultures. Um, you know, it's it's up to them to find out, but it's it's for my imagination now to to like to f figure out. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like the audience is who they are and they know who they are. Exactly. What you're presenting to them. So, and you're doing it from a, a place of love. You've got exactly. all the stories to tell in every image. And so the audience is wherever they are and they know who they are, they are. and yeah. what they're looking at. Yeah. So there's another question in the in Facebook that says, please explain the body on the left with the circular lines in the group of self portraits. Yes, so um, this is actually not the finished piece. This was like, I believe this was the, um, this, this was not the complete piece. This piece is actually called Fool's Gold. And, um, and I, in this one, there's actually a mask over it. Um, but at this time I was, I was playing with the, I forgot what they called. I know that this, 
this concentric lines like the circle. I know they, they're called something very in particular, but the idea of hip, hip, hypnotism being hypnotized. Um, and again, this, this, uh, this is a series of self-portraits. Again, so this is me trying to explain how I was feeling and how, you know, confusion of self, you know, you know, you know, there is, um, you know, there, there is a, I think there's a weird phenomenon that happens if you are, you know, and I'm not calling Nigerian a, a box, but like in, in terms of like perspective of like the diaspora, if you are born in a space and it gives you a specific view of the self and others who look like you outside your space, and then you get outside that space and then you have this opportunity to look at the box you were raised in, you know, you start to have a lot of questions. Um, and, you know, and sometimes not a lot of people can give you a lot of answers. And sometimes a lot of the questions that you, ha you have, you know, not a lot of people are willing to answer. Um, and, and then again, it's like an unlearning thing. It's understanding that, you know, you might be caught in this, in this weird illusion where you, you, you don't see yourself as black and you most definitely are. And you don't see how your history aligns with the man said next to, to you, but it definitely does. Um, so this was where I was thinking with this piece. Um, the finished piece is, makes more sense. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, this is where, this is where I, this is where I was starting. Um, and yeah, um, that's, that's what I was trying to explore with that. Okay. Um, All right. That question came from Yvonne. So thank you, Yvonne, for your question. So Kai says, uh, there's a comment and then there's a question. The comment is that's, uh, that's not odd. It's a profound way of looking at, end, at an end to a work which wish more contemporary artists considered their sitter and or muse. But the question from Kai says, what do you view with, will, what do you view will he, will be the evolution of your work? Will it incorporate more of your dance and or performance works? Um. You know what, Kai? I I definitely, um, I definitely want my work. Um, the next, the, I believe, the next phase of my of my work is is them, it's them literally coming to life. Um, you know, in in an ideal world, once I figure out, y'all, everyone will be the first to know. But um, figure, basically, I have this this strong desire for the for when a viewer of my work tries to take a photograph the image comes alive and tells a story a lot of my work is very story driven based mm -hmm. like a lot of my work is from the stories from the stories of this like from the encounters i've had with these people like the stories that come of it um for me it's very precious because i you know like you know you really do learn about, you go far much deeper into yourself when someone graces you with, with, with deaths of themselves as well. Um, from, you know, from black men talk to a black man, from, you know, a black woman talking to a black man. Like you, you, you do this level of storytelling. And like, I think for me, it's the, these, micro interactions or major interactions that really help with devil, development of, of, a, of a person. Um, you know, you need everyone, <laughs> you need the community um, to, to, really, to, to really teach and learn and grow. Um, you know, for me, there is, there is like a, a bell hooks quote that, I, uh, that really speaks to me. Um, it says, um, but many of us seek community solely to escape the fear of being alone. No one had to be solitary is central to, to art of loving. We, when we can be alone, we can be with others without using them as a means of escape. And I think that for me, it's been my journey. It's that like, I'm enjoying community now so much because it's just like the depth of experiences throughout like every part of it, it's just like incredible. And it's, you know, it's, it's the kind of things you can't find in te te textbooks. Um, so in my, in, my, in my dreams, like 
in my dreams, I, I will cancel out the ability to photograph the image so that when you try to photograph it, they start to talk. They start to tell the stories and they start, they start to, and I, I, I claim, I really, when I make my work, I really, I, I want people to look, you know, I, I want them to be like, wow, that's really interesting. But, you know, they, they see that it's a person, but that, but there's layers to me. And I, I really want them to get stuck on the, on the, like, the, like, wow, like, you know, what is that? Is that a mask? Is that a drawing? Is that a dance? And I'm like, because like being in diaspora, it's, it's, it's complex. It's not something you're going to get from just taking a quick look. You have to dig. You have to, you know, sometimes, you know, just like words, I add words. Um, I believe on the hat here, and mm -hmm. it, I know it's kind of blurry, it says, um, no pigs allowed, and that includes you. And like, that's literally what it says on the hat. And, um, and I think that it's understanding that, you know, it, it's really like, you know, learning, like part one of the conversations I had with Don was, you know, how, you know, basically, love and the love she get from black men and you know how someone and, and like things like that and things that you know <laughs> you learn about what you're doing wrong and you 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 don't really see it until someone as be able to really open your eyes to it but really that that to me is like a dream for my for my work is the ability to you know and i guess in my in my love for digital and technology being it being able to interrupt the photograph and instantaneously, when you point your camera at the image, they start to talk. Um, and for me, that's that to me is like the next evolution of my work. Nice, and that'll be an exciting one to extend the story. I just will we'll go back to it really quickly. Yvonne said that it speaks to her. The piece that she was asking you about, <laughs> she said it speaks to her. So even in its unfinished state, it still has reached someone in a very special way. So I guess that also goes to your idea of finished and what somebody else sees, create some place of finished for them. Yes, absolutely. So, so thank you for that. There is so much I can unpack about the work that you have when you talk about your sto the stories. In every image, there's a story that has something to do with the background, the foreground, the, the pieces you choose to make the collage with and where you place them, all of that is a part of the story you're trying to tell. And I'm sure it's rooted in some of that conversation you have with the people that you're sitting with, the people you've had conversation with. I don't know if we have time to go through how much we could <laughs> unpack the layers from each one of these, because I don't know if we should ask about this particular one, because I think Dom is the one who was asking these questions about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm sure that... Uh, the evolution of you and, and your sharing of what you shared today, which I'm grateful that you have been able to do and take us through the entire process, which we, we should probably say something like, this is Chup's process of anybody looking to take pieces of this and understand it or try to replicate it, you can't. It comes from a place of your spiritual walk into how you put this together. And so it's uniquely yours. And every step of it is showing us a different part of you as well as the subject that you are presenting in this practice. And I appreciate that so much. And I don't know if you wanna share where you are gonna be, what your next event or activity is, so we can actually uh, at least let folks know where you're gonna be, where they can see your work, how they can see your work. Absolutely. Um, I, you can follow me on Instagram at artbychooks. Um, it's A-R-T-B-Y-C-H-U-K-S. Um, my my um, website is artbychooks.com. If it's if it's um, deactivated, it's because I have to renew my Squarespace. But you know, it'll be back up really soon. Um, what I'm working on um, currently, um, I am co um, I'm the co curator of a show with Linnea Paul. Um, it's called Molasses. Um, it opens up at the Howard Community College. And Linnea, please don't like beat me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 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 there. Um, I believe it, it opens next week, and the reception is February 15th. Um, but yeah, please check that out. We have some incredible artists um, in the show, and hopefully, you know, see some of you guys there. Um, and as for other stuff, if you are in Des Moines, Iowa, um, um, a show that I'm in, a group show called States of Becoming, will be there at the Des Moines Art Institute. Um, so. 
if you're in Iowa, um, February, <laughs> um, please go check it out. So thank you so much for taking the time to share your practice with us and the future dates. And hopefully you can keep in touch and we will always know where you are and what you're working on so that we can we can participate as best we can. I still want my studio visit. I haven't forgotten about that. So, so, we'll, so we'll, make, we'll make that happen. I'm not sure if anybody else has any questions or tubes. I didn't see any more in Facebook or in the chat or those who are with us here on Zoom. If you have any other questions, I do um I do appreciate you taking the time to get on the screen and share. See, it didn't matter that you had a few nerves, it's all gone, right? It's like uh, talking to friends. It's these are your people. You're talking yeah. to your people about your work and your stuff. And that is, and I do mean your stuff, love, spirit, energy, everything that you put together, you put on the screen and share it with us in a way that only you could tell. And only you could present this work in such a beautiful and meaningful way. The people who may not have known you before, they surely know you now because you've given us the story and you've taken us through a trajectory of your life and your practice that we will always remember. And I thank you for that. Joshua Johnson Council, thank you for that. And so with that, Jean, I'm not sure if you have any things you want to wrap up, but I thank you for that, Jean. I want to thank our audience on Facebook um, and thank you all who are here with us on JJC on Zoom. Chooks, you, you've given us such bright light into your process and your work. Thank you so much. Thank you to the staff of the BMA who supported us and got us on uh, our live stream tonight. Good night. And our next JJC Talks will take place on February the 8th. See you then.